This is a great fish here, man. We died here and you hear people talk about bonefish, permit, tarpon, and all these other inshore species that, that are, you know, roaming these flats. But, you know, the perception sometimes is that for snook, you gotta go way back in the Everglades. But there are some snook close to home. Oh, he's big. Oh, look at him shaking his head. You know, we start thinking, well, is there more? We still have some bait left. Let's run down to Long Key Bridge. The tarpon sh really should be there. Well, he's coming up. Stay here. It's gonna be the hardest fighting jack ever if that's a jack. Yeah! Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. What's going on? Just getting everything powered up here. Brought a few uh, light rods we can catch some snook on. I think uh, they've been biting right at the real close by if we can catch yeah. bait. Um, Good deal. I know we don't have a lot of time this afternoon, so we could run over there and uh, probably catch a few snook, maybe uh, jacks, whatever else is biting, you know? Okay. You ready to yeah, let's do let it. this baby down? The bait's been here pretty good just up the road. We go catch that. We're in good shape. The uh, tarpon might bite a little bit, but uh, it's just a little on the cold side today, I think. Yeah. But the snook, you know, when it's a little too cold for the tarpon to bite, the snook still bite yeah. good. Well, this lift's nice. You get everything all ready to go and then just back out of here. How do you like the new motor? Love it. How's that compared to your Verada? I think it's got a little more pep in it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely faster out of the hole. All right, we're off. New boat looks great, man. Yeah, I'm loving it. I like the reflex decking. It's awesome looking. So one of the coolest things is about Hawks K here is that, man, we can fish so close to the dock. I mean, for so many different varieties of species. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of people just don't think is close here is snook. You know, we've died here and you hear people talk about bonefish, permit, tarpon, and all these other inshore species that, that are, you know, roaming these flats. But, you know, the perception sometimes is that for snook, you gotta go way back in the Everglades. And yes, that's a lot of fun, but there are some snook close to home. Yeah, there's even snook right here at this dock. You can see them uh, with the tarpon and stuff. There's a couple pet snook that are right at the dock. But, you know, these bridges, these rocks, this has always been a good spot. I mean, I, I guess it's pretty well known, but a lot of people just leave that and go straight to the Everglades because that is like, I mean, that's the epicenter of the snook and red fishing. But there's a lot of snook around these bridges. There's a lot of snook close to home. And a lot of guys fish for snook at night yep. on these bridges. Come all the way down from Miami to fish these bridges at night. That's and what I grew up big... when I was a kid. That was uh, when we'd walk those bridges at night, throwing these, these bucktail jigs and catching snook. And uh, so I, knew, I always knew that there was snook here, but I never figured out how to fish them during the day very effectively until, until you know, some guys showed me how, how to do it around here. And during the day, the key is the pilchards. And luckily, during the spring here, the pilchards are pretty thick. Um, we were able to run down the road that day and, um, and find them. Uh, you know, and that was the key. Once we found those, I knew we could probably have a good chance of catching these snook. Nice giant ones, that's for sure. Nice jumbo pilchards. And you know, we, we don't have to go far. You can go right under the, the bridge and onto the other side. You're really fishing right out in front of Hawk's Cave. All right. What do you think? Bounce up and down here a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, maybe try right here for a second. Mm -hmm. Anchor up here. There ought to be some snook around here somewhere. Yeah. Well, we got a little bait. It's a funny thing, you know, those snook, sometimes you can see them, but most of the time they're, they're hanging just on the deep edge of these rocks and the edges of these bridges and, and, and they'll move around. You know, I think it's it's depending on the strength of the tide, right? The the real strong tides, I think they like to be kind of in the middle where they're not, you know, getting, you know, having to fight the current as much. But on we had a weak tide, we were at the change of the tide, so I think they had kind of moved to, right towards the edge um, of the bridge. Uh, but the, they're they're interesting fish, and, and um, you know, if you move around, the key is to have the bait. But if you move around, you can usually find a few. They're gonna jump again. Oh man, they're swimming all around here. 
think one followed, some other kind of fish followed mine up right, right here. Coming up again. This is guys super yellow in this off color water. This is a great fish here, man. Right in the old button. All right. That's a great fish right there, man. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Yeah, Beautiful, he was, huh? He was ready for that. Knew he was going to do that. That is a nice one. He was Ooh. ready for that pilcher to come over the top. That's that's close to a 30-inch snook, man. Tell you what, he was not going to come off. Strange hook. There he goes. These ones around the uh, ridges can get big, man. Yeah. Hard fighters, too. So many people think you got to go way back in the Everglades to catch Chinook, man. But I know. <laughs> We're like three seconds from home. <laughs> right here by Hawks Cay. Well, that's the cool thing is everywhere you go, there's something different. There's fish, fish on all sides. That was cool. It's a great fish right there. Do the old thumb trick, and there he goes. When they let go of that thumb, they're ready to go. Well, maybe he's got a couple of brothers and an uncle. Better retire. There. Better retire on that one. You think so? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Wow. A really nice one. <laughs> How about that? Look at that. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, Reflex Boat Decking, and Vibe. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, you got to go way back to the Everglades or way back to some of these islands or way, way from the road. But the road is the one constant that, that is on the Florida Keys. There's 42 bridges in the Florida Keys, and there's this rock riprap all along the side. That's good habitat for the fish, all the way from Key West all the way to Key Largo. A lot of people come down here and never even fish out of a boat. They only fish along the road. They fish along the bridges. We have these amazing bridges that have been transformed into basically fishing piers with a lot of money from the state to make these great fishing spots. And there's a reason that they're so popular. There's a reason that that kind of money goes into it. It's because fish like snook and tarpon and grouper and all that live right here by the road. So, yeah. I mean, you could easily fish the Florida Keys very productively and never leave sight of the road. Very easy. And in fact, a lot of people do. And a lot of people never even get in a boat and do just fine. So, you know, it might, might look a little strange, you know, that you're in a nice boat that could go anywhere and you choose to fish right next to the road, but there's a reason for that. That's where the fish are too. So yeah, you can go way back and we do often, but this is a nice opportunity because, you know, right here where we are, if you have a north wind or you have a south wind, you have this road that's running east and west right here that offers a good wind break. And that's kind of what we were seeing that particular day. We were out of the wind and it, you know, with a hard north wind, we can fish the other side of that road. And it's just a nice habitat all the way up and down the Florida Keys. Fish on. Wow, another one, huh? Yep. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That one wants to go to the rocks. He gonna jump. There he comes. Oh, come on, buddy. Is that a snook or yeah, It's a snook. I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger, though. This was just a mean, mean one. Yeah, it is. I thought this one was gonna be bigger than the one you just caught. I thought you might have had a jack there. I'll just get him with my hands. Only net the giant ones, huh? <laughs> and he was mean. He took a much harder run than the bigger fish. Come here, little fella. Funny thing about when you're fishing close to the road like that, you always get the, the fish and hunk. 
You know, like people are always like, beep, beep, nah, all right. I mean, I guess I always imagine that they're saying nice things, um, <laughs> but they're always honking at you, you know, when you're, when you're fishing right next to the robe. The fishing honk. Fishing honk. All right, whenever you're ready there, little fella. Another fishing honk. A lot of fishing honks. Everybody's wishing they were fishing. Where they are, there are obviously quite a few there because I hooked up, you hooked up, I hook up again, and there's like a flurry of activity right around that one spot. But it was just exactly like you said it was gonna be. We were gonna stop in this one area. It took us a little bit to find that exact area, but once we did, we got the bites. There he is. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a big one. Wow. This is a wonker here. I don't know if I'm keeping him out of the rocks. Wow. Think you got a big one? Yeah, real big. I'm gonna He's be fighting, there in just a second. Fighting like it. Chum a couple in there if you get a chance to. Keep them, keep them frenzied. Whew. If this is a, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet, but if it's a snook, it's a big snook. Could be anything, I guess. Sometimes we get a nice grouper in here. Jacks, I don't know. I think it's a snook. Doing that kind of fishing, you never know what you're gonna catch. I mean, there are so many different creatures that, 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 are, that are hanging around those bridges, whether it's big tarpon, groupers, jacks, snook, you know, all kinds of different stuff. Oh, it's a big one, dude. Big one? Yeah. I get him right here. Huh. Huh. Oh, he's big. Oh, look at him shaking his head. I mean, you know, for around here, he's big. Not, not a Jupiter big one, but. You know, this is very similar to fishing the jetties like up at inlets like Jupiter and yeah. Fort Pierce and stuff. Wow. Oh, look at that sucker. Oh, that's a good one there, wow. That is a good one. Good work. Wow, that is awesome. I'll tell you what. <laughs> guy. Wow. It's great, man. <laughs> Isn't that cool? God, that's a, I mean, seriously, <laughs> some people think that you got to make a hour long ride to catch a fish like that. Yeah. And well, you yeah. can definitely catch them up there. You think about all the things that Hawks K is known for, right? Bonefish, permit tarpon, like right off the front porch there, but the snook are one that are here too. Well, they're definitely here. Definitely here. We got these nice pilchards, man. These are some of the nicest pilchards I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, they are. They are so healthy and big. We don't, we really don't get them like this. Key West. Woohoo! That's fun. Man, I didn't think I was gonna stop him. I better retire after that. That's one of those, you get so excited, wanna catch another one, you don't retire. Yeah, you're not gonna get the next one. You know, all in all, close to home. Really good day, but uh, you know, we start thinking, well, is there more? We still have some bait left because there's something else that we could do. You're thinking, man, instead of just throwing all this bait here, let's run down to Long Key Bridge. It's the right time of the year for sure, but we've had some weather recently that has lowered the water temperature, had a big blow come through. So the tarpon sh really should be there this time of the year, but they also could not be. So we were kind of thinking maybe it's a little early, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's the next day, but maybe it's today. And with this well full of pilchards, maybe we could get the tarpon up and maybe catch a big tarpon. You know, the water was just a little cool side, you know, to get those tarpon to bite. But, uh, you know, with all those pilchards, if they were there, I figured we could get one to bite. I heard something eat one down here. It sounded a lot like a tarpon. And we move around, try a couple spots. We started unloading and finally see this big boil come back there. Um, you, we actually saw one free jump after a bait and, um, and you know, got excited about it, flip over there and I hook up and I mean, it was uh, obvious, it was, a, it was a big fish. That might be the right one, probably is. Jump. 
go. Spooling me out, going under the bridge. I mean, you have to throw the anchor. We get the boat all spun around. And I mean, he, he had already taken half the spool or more, probably about a 500 yard run um, right under that bridge. Which side? Right. I just know Jack, unless you got him hooked in the tail. You know, I was getting low on line. You, you gun the boat, we run under the bridge, I'm getting real as fast as I can, and then we finally get caught up with him well on the other side of the bridge, and then he decides to go back the other way into the current. maybe he had already gone back the other way because he was way back there uh, along the bridge. So he's coming up. Come on, jump. Be a target. Boy, he's coming up. Stay here. you be the hardest fighting jack ever if that's a jack. It's gotta be a tarpon. And when that happens, you know, the one thing you gotta do is figure out which one of those bridge spans he went under. And it sounds like that would be easy to see, but you know, your line's kind of headed this way. There's a lot of current. It could easily have gone this way or this way. And you have to really know 100%. And I'm trying to look at the line, the light's getting low, and you're trying to look at the line, and it's kind of like, is he, did he go that way, and he's around the bridge this way, or is he through this span? And Finally, if you pick wrong, where, you're in trouble. Right. There's no recovery. Well, yeah, you're gonna, you're definitely gonna lose him. Going right, going left, going left. Straight. So we ended up picking the right way, and and get close enough to him, go down the bridge, come back through the bridge, and go again. And uh, gosh, hold on. Go there, on. Sam. I'm sure it was a tarpon though. Gosh. Well, we can go right back up here. We got a few more baits. Man. I guess I put a little too much pressure on him. I Maybe, to... I don't know. He's all around the bridge. Yeah. Just uh, got impatient. It, you know, that, that sometimes happens. I mean, you're fishing around all that structure for a fish that's got a hard, bony mouth. It's really hard to, hard to hook them anyway. A lot of times they get off. Huh. Thought I had him. Went all the way out. All the way back to the bridge. Well, that's how it goes sometimes with the old tarpon. So we got our brand new Yelfin Bay boat this year. And one of the things I'm really excited about on this boat is for the first time ever, we got this boat decking on here. We got this reflex decking. Um, system and it's really nice. It's very durable, non-skid, so you're not sliding around. There's extra shock absorption and you really notice that throughout the day. Over the years, I've fished on different boats that have different decking products on it and I thought it was cool, but I never really pulled the trigger because I noticed it was really hard to clean. You know, we get fish blood on there or throw the cast and get something on. Um, it, it just kind of soaked into the material and it was really hard to clean. But that's what's different about this Reflex compared to any of the other boat decking products. This stuff is incredibly stain resistant. You know, just spraying it off, I mean, it comes clean right away. If something's really bad, you know, just a little soap and water like you would on your deck. I've actually noticed, I think it stays cleaner than my, uh, my regular boat deck would. Um, so very impressed with it. So if you're interested in the Reflex Decking or any of our other sponsors' products, go to TackleDirect.tv to check it out. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X. Lithium Pros. And Golden Boat Lifts. It's hard for me to believe Saltwater Experience has been on for 17 years, and you can find every show for free on Waypoint TV. Go to waypointtv.com and download the app. You know, there were some other great, great fishing that we had right there at that bridge. I was catching some really nice big Jack Cravels. They were making big, big boils, and I think the tarpon and the jacks were, were kind of fighting over our pilchards, and maybe the jacks were a little bit more aggressive in some situations. And they would get that, that bait before the tarpon. Jack. Jack? 
Most likely. Sure? It's acting like it. I threw right over where we'd hooked that tarpon. And, and um, you know, again, I just put it in the rod holder while I was doing something else and get a bite and, and you know, go fight this. And, and, I, and I, you know, I was sure this was a jack because that's what we'd be catching some big jack revolves. And I was thinking, all right, you know, another jack, another jack. And I was kind of horsing them and fighting them. And, and, you know, it's just so cool, the surprise factor when, 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 when you know, you think it's something. And I look down there, I'm like, whoa. Oh, it's a big black grouper. Wow. <laughs> or a goliath. It's a black, a really <laughs> nice one. <laughs> How about that? Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Too bad they're not in season, buddy. No We'd be having dinner. That's a nice He's hooked well. That's a great one. That's a nice black. That is. Golly. How about that? Talk about never knowing what you're going to catch around here. I would have guaranteed, I would have bet that that was a jack all day long. He's thumping it like his head like one. That is a nice black grouper. Not something that we catch at the bridge often, you know, they certainly live there, but we don't catch them that often. You got the jacks that are very aggressive, you got the tarpon that are very aggressive, the groupers generally live on the bottom. But when you threw that out there, you threw it out there, literally put it in the rod holder and turned around and your rod was already down. So that grouper was up there on the surface eating and uh, good bycatch, you know, something else. You know, we fished right until the last light, awesome light at the end. Just a beautiful night to be out there. Yeah. That's a really nice one for the keys. Yeah. You know? Yep. Snook, jacks, a nice grouper, all kinds of variety. Man, and what a beautiful day.